The written word is the closest thing we have to accessing people's feelings from the past. Using methods from the field of computational linguistics, we're analysing the way that people wrote about technological change in the long 19th century. We were very interested in language models and language uh, modelling as a technique, firstly because it, 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 when we started the project, but especially now, it's a very hotly debated uh, topic in, in data science, but now also widely beyond it. A language model, a neural language model, is a um, probability distribution over the words, over, over language. Language models helps you identify what is the most uh, likely uh, word you are expected, expected to see. A language model tries to predict what comes next in a sequence. These language models tend to represent the language used as it is used in a certain society or time. So most language models are trained on contemporary data, data of today. They don't actually know anything about the past. It was very important to have language models trained on 19th century data because uh, 19th century language and 19th century society is so different from uh, today's society and today's uh, way of speaking. And there's a lot of discussion in natural language processing and in general in the whole community about language modeling due to the popularization of ChatGPT. And this is a specific example in which we show you that these things rely on the data that I've been trained on. So in many ways, what we're interested in is, is actually relates to the issue of model bias. And so what, what, the model, what the model predicts reflects often societies or like prejudices, but also in general, not, not always negative, but also just, just like attitudes general in, in a society. The overarching question was, uh, is there a, a relation between the deep changes in society uh, in the time following or during the uh, so-called Industrial Revolution in Great Britain and the way language was changing? So we uh, started this uh, sub-project called um, Atypical Animacy, where we wanted to see to what extent machines were talked about as if they were animate beings. So we devised this computational method that basically asks the computer, given this sentence containing the word machine, we mask the word machine, and we ask the computer, can you guess what the word miss that is missing is? And what we found out that if we hide the word machine in a sentence, sometimes a language model will, will, will predict a living entity. So actually where those model made like a wrong predictions, this was actually very interesting for us because this, it, it, it assumed there was, was a human, but actually there was a machine in this sentence. For example, some, some professions like sewing, so if you would have like, there were like many sewing machines, if you would hide the word machine in this sentence, a Victorian uh, language model would, would count, there were many sewing girls or women because this, this, this work was mostly done by, by these groups at, at this time. There is a kind of interesting irony in this work because we're using a tool which many people now take to be as if it were alive to investigate this particular phenomenon from history in which people in the past also made the same leap, which is imagining that the machines around them were also alive. But a language model is no more alive than a steam engine was alive in the 19th century. So for example, ChatGPT uh, is a very hot topic at the moment and everyone talks about it and, and some people have started questioning uh, whether it has intelligence, and there's a whole uh, debate around this. And uh, if we look back in time, uh, people were having similar conversations and similar feelings and of, of threat even uh, towards machines. And I think these, uh, these kind of discoveries were only possible thanks to large-scale computational methods instead of like close reading approaches. And from the point of view of analysing the language, we, we have a lot to learn from the amount of historical texts that we have from the long 19th century, better understanding the past can really um, help us uh, be better prepared to understand the present and, and the future. Computer scientists have a particular sense of humour and in the ongoing work around the language model we have used, um, which is based on an architecture called BERT, um, it's been an ongoing joke to change the name of the language model according to what it's been trained on. The French version of BERT is called Camembert and so on. 
And the language model that we trained as part of the project was named by a colleague of mine, Blurt, which I think is a good thing because it just shows you in a nice, succinct way that this language model was trained on the BL collections and that's what it can be used for, to understand those books. And it reminds you all the time uh, of the specific relation between the model and the material it's trained on.